All right, today I'm going to do a fun experiment I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm going to compare five Les Pauls from different years and different styles of Les Pauls to each other, running through a 1976 Fender Champ. Just a nice organic sound uh, with the Les Pauls, just to compare what they sound like in relation to each other. And I also have one of my favorite guitars, which is a Nags Kenai and I'm going to show you guys that also and I'm going to compare that to the Les Paul since it's it's a it's a single cut guitar that's very uh, I would say it's, it's Gibson influenced and I happen to have a set of Gibson burst bucker pickups in it so we'll see how does this nag sound in comparison to the Les Pauls does it sound better we'll see I, I really don't know I, I love all of these guitars tremendously I use them all and uh, record with all of them. They're some of my most cherished instruments, but I want to see in a shootout what are the differences. So we'll we'll see here shortly. I'll show you the guitars up close and personal and the, the amp that we're running through. I'm going to be recording through Pro Tools, uh, probably going to add a little bit of reverb uh, post-production just to give it a little bit of ambience, perhaps just a little smattering of delay. Nothing much really to uh, impede the tone uh, and I've got a Sansamp Tech 21 gain pedal I may run just a little bit of gain on it just to uh, to test out the gain uh, frequencies as well with these other with all these guitars so we'll, we'll see here in just a second all right so these are the weapons of choice for this comparison first in this video is a 1981 Les Paul custom this is uh, a Norlin era, obviously. It's got a maple neck. It's got 498T and a 496R in it. Love this guitar. Then the second one is a 2002 Wine Red Custom. It's got a set of Seth Lover paths in it. Then we've got the 2001 Les Paul Standard. I was sent a set of tone-specific Bloombucker pickups to test out about a year ago, and I put the Bloombuckers in that. It did have some 498, 496 set in it, uh, but I like these Bloombuckers. I kept them in there. They were supposed to emulate the 59, I believe. Then we've got a 2020 Les Paul Standard. This is a 1960s model. It's got some burst buckers in it, burst bucker one and a two. Then I've got the 59, or 58 R8. This is a 2006 R8. And a super fat neck on this one. So we're going to demo the R8. It's got the burst bucker custom shop wound pickups in it. And then last but not least, the Nags Kanai. This is number 149 from the Nags Company. I've had this thing for several years. I love it. And I've got a set of burst buckers in this. I love burst bucker pickups. It's got a burst bucker one and two in it. So we'll, we will test out the, the Nags, can I, and see how she holds up with the Gibson family. All right, so the setup today is pretty basic. Just running an iMac with Pro Tools. Got to focus right running a 57 straight in front of a 1976 Fender Champ, all original. Got the volume on 10, the treble on three, and the bass on 10. This is the tone that I like the best out of it. Just real basic. I'm gonna probably run a little reverb and delay post-production just to round out the sound a little bit. But real plain Jane, we'll hear what these guitars truly sound like in comparison.
Okay, so that was a pretty cool demonstration, I think. After reviewing the files, uh, just briefly after I recorded them, I think I prefer the Gibson R8 and the Nags Kanai Tier 2 above all of the, the tones. They all sounded really nice to me. They were, they were all uh, really inspiring but i i think the gibson r8 for me had a uh 
had more of a open, airy uh, feel. I don't know if that has something to do with the the duplication of the the 58 that they're replicating with the the R8 series, but it certainly has a an open, breathy sound like a burst and when you play it it feels like it you can you can feel it under your fingertips the nags has a lot of sustain it has a very rich sustain you can feel the entire guitar just resonate in your body as you as it's ringing out as you're playing it uh, and i think that has a lot to do with the tailpiece that joe nags uh, developed for the the kanai series uh, it's uh, very interesting how they have the the tailpiece, all one unit screwed into the body. So uh, anyway, they all sounded wonderful. Each one had its own characteristic. I thought the tone specific pickups in the 2001 standard had a, had a, a nice open sound to them also, but the wave file for the tone specific pickups was significantly lower, it had less output. And the R8 had a lot of output. It was probably the loudest of the guitars. And it's funny, Tone Specific says they replicate the, the 50s pickups and uh, they, they really don't sound anything alike uh, compared to what Gibson puts out and what Tone Specific goes for. But I guess it's just a matter of what you, what you like, what tone uh, hits your ears the way that is appealing to you. Uh, both were excellent. Uh, and the, the customs were wonderful. The, the Norlin 81 had a, a very high gain, uh, a lot of output on the 498s. The, the, um, it's a super heavy guitar, like Norlin era guitars. The, the other custom, the Red Custom, had Seth Lovers in it. They were very clean and clear, uh, very definitive in the tone. Uh, a little high gain as well, but not quite as powerful as the 498s. And I think the, the 1960s, the 2020, probably the third place in this whole video would be the 2020, uh, the 2020 standard that I have. First place I'd give to the R8, second to the Kanai, although my mind could probably change any moment, and then third place to the 2020 standard. Gibson's really knocking it out of the park with these uh, 60s and 50s uh, standards that are new right now. Uh, but nothing wrong with any of these guitars, but there's the demo. hope that you like it. If you like this video, please subscribe, comment. Uh, feel free to leave comments if, if, you, if you'd like to discuss this or share your thoughts, and I appreciate you watching. Thanks.